Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Not Too Comic Book. This being a show where we talk about TV shows that are editations of comic books. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Stargirl. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Obviously, after last episode, you know, the weight of Henry dying has been hitting everyone pretty hard. And obviously, you know, Barbara's wondering, like, you know, the fact of the matter is, like, should we call the police or something? But it's like, we don't know how far their reach goes. So it's like, we don't know, like, this whole situation. So we don't know, like, who we can really trust in all of this. So it's a thing of, like, we just have to keep our time. Like, we have to keep going about every day like it's every other, like, a normal day. Because the last thing we want is Jordan to know that we know him being, about him being icicle. Because if he does, we're done for it. So... But then at the same time, there's a whole situation where um, Courtney's dad shows up, Sam. And so, and, you know, it finally answers a lot of questions of like, well, well, what's this whole thing? Like, Barbara always knew that obviously like Star, like she had wondered, I guess for her, she wanted to know like what made Courtney kind of believe that. You know, she knew from the beginning, but then I guess like even she wasn't 100% sure. She was like, maybe something, I don't know. I guess maybe in some shape or form, maybe she was thinking maybe Sam is actually Starman. Um, and I guess it, at the end of the day, it answered a, well because now in retrospect, it's like she kept trying to find Sam. So it's like oh, because she said like she spent like a year trying to find Sam, like emails and everything, never got a response. So she's probably thinking maybe he was Starman, maybe he did die. So that answered that. But now he shows up in person. But even hers, like. Even Barbara's like, why now, though? And that is the biggest thing. It's like, she's like, I looked for you forever. It's been over a decade, but why do you pop up now? For, for him, it's like, you know, he wants to, you know, be get to know his daughter before it's too late, if it isn't already too late. But obviously, Courtney has a hard time believing it. It's like, no, my dad is actually Starman. But now it's like, she's like, it, it is Starman, right? But then, like, this whole realization kind of broke her because it's like, Everything she's done has been under the guise of like she's like I'm Starman's daughter. I'm I'm getting justice for him. Uh, it's kind of almost like basically she felt like the staff was her birthright. Like it's kind of like I'm carrying the torch of my father, you know. Especially because for her, her dad wasn't around. Like you know, as a little girl, you know that broke her heart. So now that she's older, it's like oh now I understand why my dad wasn't around because he died because he was a hero. So I'm gonna fight for him. I'm gonna fight for everyone. But now she blames herself because she's like. Henry, Joey, they all died. I've drawn so many people into this. Me thinking I'm a hero when I'm not. I'm thinking I'm something I'm not, you know? And I just, you, you know, she's kind of breaking down like that. And Mike's obviously like, is that your dad? He's asking all these questions because he's literally the only one out of the loop. And, you know, Pat kind of yells at him a little bit. But he's like, it's going to be okay. And Mike's like, yeah, sure. Because it's like you saying that. Plus, I don't, none of you are telling me the truth about anything. And so... Sam, you know, kind of goes off with Courtney and they spend time together. He's like, you know, he talks about the necklace. Like, he got, like, it, it was something from his grandmother that, you know, he ended up giving it to Courtney when she was four years old. Like, he has one and she has one. And the whole thing is, you know, him talk, you know, he talks a little bit about the fact is that he's kind of been all over the place trying stuff here and there, but it never really worked out. But that's what's like, I was like, even then, it's like, that should have been a, a key factor it's like he still never really went into specifics about where he's been for the past decade but whatever the case may be he's you know convincing Courtney like hey like the fact of the matter is like you know maybe you can come visit me sometime you know it's like she because he's like I know I don't kind of deserve your forgiveness or whatever but I'd like the chance to get to know you you to get to know me and it's just like Courtney kind of was like oh because that's all she wanted she wanted her father in her life so it's like yeah in this moment it's like star man might not be my dad but hey I, I have my dad and everything and then when he asked for the necklace, I was like, he was like, yeah, these are, oh, these necklaces. At first when he was like, these necklaces are special. I was like, oh, this, is this going to be like something? But he's like talking about the past and stuff like that. It's like, oh, like some very like person. Because he, he says a line where it's like, oh, this was made by someone like who, uh, designer for the stars or whatever. I was like, oh, is this supposed to be like, is this going to lead into some cosmic stuff? Like either he's, he's going to think it's like some normal stuff, but in actuality, his family has some kind of ties to all this. But it's like, no, for him. This what this was always about. It's like not, like the moment he's like, yeah, he's like the moment he's like, oh, but if I have your, I always had had a feeling you'd still keep yours. Uh, but you know they're worth a lot. And if I had both of them, I could sell them. And I was like the moment he was saying selling it, I was like, oh, we got stranger that da- uh, stranger things, dad. Uh, like how uh, Will and uh, Jonathan's dad showed up. It was like it's literally just the same thing. It's like oh, you're here to be a scumbag, dad. You're kind of a deadbeat dad, and you're just even more of a scumbag. And, like, you can tell it breaks Courtney's heart in that moment. Because, like, 
sadly, she started thinking, like, oh, man, my dad, it's great. Like, oh, I get the chance to actually know him. So, yeah, he might not be starving, but at least he's alive and I get to know. Oh, you're an asshole. That's what this was about. It was never about getting to know me. You came here to get the necklaces. Because I'm assuming for him it's like... Because selling one necklace is fine. Selling both of them is probably worth a lot more. And by keeping his, he's also guaranteeing that Courtney is more likely to hand over hers. But I think it's more so like the former that it's like you need both of them because they're super expensive together, you know? And Courtney's like, no, you have it. Because like the last thing she wants is to have a reminder of him. Like, you know, because that necklace was meant to be a reminder of like, oh, this dad, like, you know, because it's that sad thing of like, Courtney doesn't really remember her dad. She was a little girl when he left. And the fact of the matter is Barbara obviously remembered. So, you know, I think even her, I think maybe even she kind of wanted to think, hey, maybe he was Starman. Maybe he was a better person than I thought he was, but for him to turn out not to be, you know? And that's just the most heartbreaking thing. And obviously Courtney comes back inside and, you know, Pat's there for her. He's like, you need to yell, you know, you need to scream, do whatever you need to. He's like, I'm here for that. Like, do whatever you need to kind of take it out on me. Whatever you need, Courtney, I'm here. And she hugs him because it's like, he... This, it, despite everything, despite the complicated, bumpy relationship they've had prior to this, like for, like I said, they've grown closer over the course of the season. He's more of a dad to her than her own dad. And this is a man who's only known her for two years, and he's been more of a dad than her. And her, to, to her own father has been her entire life, you know? And he's all talking about, like, oh, yeah, the necklaces and stuff like that, blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, I'll make it up to Courtney or whatever. It's like... You broke that girl's heart. Just like, don't ever come back. He's like, I wasn't planning on it. Uh, but Barbara, she looks good, you know, you know, even after I had her. And then I was hoping, I was like, come on, you could do it. And bam, uh, Pat leaves him out. I'm like, hell yeah. He's like, you're lucky I'm busy. Because it's like, yeah, he wasn't, he'd be kicking your ass right now. Even though he already kicked your ass. I was like, oh, I was like, you just had to be a piece of shit, didn't you? So it's like, um, sadly now Courtney kind of has that, you know, truth lingering. Um, and sadly, because of all that, like her, like the staff won't work for her anymore. And she takes it as because I'm not Starman's actual daughter, the staff knows that and it doesn't accept me anymore. And this, it actually kind of goes along the lines of kind of like what I was bringing up last week, at, you know, using the Kingdom Hearts comparison. It's not the exact same thing, but it's like because for a moment, like she lost confidence in herself. She, because. Believing that Starman was her dad, like, it gave her confidence and made her believe in herself. Like, no, I can do this. I can do this. I can wield the staff. I can be this hero. And all of that confidence is gone. She even shows up with the team and she's like, I'm not, you know, I'm not Stark over there. Like, yeah, you are. But it's like, and it's like, the staff doesn't work anymore. And, you know, even Rick being like, the staff is stupid, you know, because you kind of brought us all together. You've done all this. But for her, it's like. I've hurt enough people. She doesn't want to be responsible for any more people's deaths. I didn't even talk about it, but there's like even a thing of like Yolanda apparently went to church to kind of pray for um, Henry, you know, and it's like, I think that speaks volumes about like, you know, those last moments kind of, you know, changing her mind when like, despite like how angry she is for at him, you know, probably having wished countless times that situation to be happened the way it is for him to die or whatever. It's just, it's still one thing to kind of think that, you know, just because you're angry at someone, I mean, rightfully so, she has a right to be angry, but it's like, it's something else entirely different when that person's in front of her, especially because I think for her, seeing him sacrifice himself like that made her see like, oh, this isn't the same Henry, that he is better than I kind of gave him credit for, you know, so that was just kind of an interesting element to that whole thing, but um, then there's also the whole situation with Brainwave, who, um, who now, once again, he does remember everything because that was the big debate of like whether he remembered or not. But it's like, oh, I know who Stargirl is. It's Courtney Whitmore. And it's like, so I'm going to go kill her. And it's like, crap, because Jordan likes Barbara. So for him, it's like, damn it. He's like, you don't basically, you don't have to kill Barbara or whatever. And then like, you know, Jordan's, uh, uh, Henry's getting inside of his head like, Oh, because you because that's her mom. It's like basically no child should have their you know no parent should have their you know what it would do to them to lose their child and stuff. And I'm like that's hypocritical coming from you, considering the fact is you killed Joey and then you proceeded to kill his dad and I'm assuming his mom. And so, so it's like you, you, the whole situation is his entire that entire family is dead because of you and you start up with someone's kid. So it's a really hypocritical of you to say that. But in, this situation is different because it's like, oh, it's not just any other person. This is the person you like. So you wouldn't want her to be so distraught, you know. Because what makes Barbara Barbara is who she is right now. And if she lost Courtney, she'd never be that same person. She'd lose that shine, that that brightness that he probably hasn't seen in another human being since his wife. 
you know, so that's he probably sees a similar light that he wanted to keep that light shining bright. But the moment he finds out, you know, like, oh, she was looking into like the whole thing about Starman being killed by um, Icicle. He's like, because at the very least, I guess he was hoping that if she didn't know, then maybe he could use that as an excuse to be like, as long as she doesn't know. But the fact that she's looking that up makes him think. And she deleted it from her history and stuff like that. He's like, she knows about me and everything. So she has to go even later on going to, um, you know, him going to a um, brainwave and going like, okay, kill all of them. Pat, Courtney, her mom, and kill Mike. Last thing we need are any legacy sticking around, which is like, okay, going full blown super villain. Like, it's like, you're reluctant, but for him, it's like, this mission is way too important. What we're doing, new and Project New America, is too important to let anything and anyone jeopardize that. So, uh, to see that kind of change. And I should talk about it. The fact of the matter is, Brainway, you can tell Henry's death bothers him, but at the same time, it seems like he compartmentalizes it. It seems like he compartmentalized the whole thing about killing his wife, because even for him, it's like, I killed my own son and wife for this project of yours. It goes showing you how much I believe in it. Because he's like, oh, you think this is just going to be me controlling, you know, six states? He's like, no, we're going to control like half the country. Because he talks about the fact is, because he killed Henry, he feels like he got stronger. Which almost begs the question, it, it's not going to happen, but it could be a possibility. Could it be a situation where we see it? Jordan, if Jordan killed Cameron, would the same thing happen? Is it just psychosomatic where it's like almost like not psychosomatic is probably isn't the right word. Um, the one, what I'm wondering, is it all psychological is what I'm trying to say. Could it be that uh, Brainwave feels like he's gotten stronger because in some shape or form it's almost like, oh, my son still lives in some shape or form in the power I gained from him? Is that what it is? You know, maybe, maybe not. Probably reading too much into it, but I just thought that was interesting. But also seeing how cold and con calculated he was. I mean, to be fair, he spent all these years knowing that he was the one directly responsible for killing Henry's mom, so... And he still was kind of the person he was towards Henry, so, you know, he... he I, once again, I think getting his powers kind of warped... Like, he was always his person on the inside. Maybe the darkness in him kind of got awakened because of everything, or, you know, to amplify whatever was already there. Whatever the case may be, it's not like he's been the best person person like his powers kind of changed him into a terrible human being you know so there's that whole um, avenue to it then at the same time we have everything with Justin um, his brain being a little scattered the way it is I was curious because even he's like he's looking for his steed and he's trying to he's trying to get back itself but he's thinking like oh stripey can help me um, and then when he was in the um, bathroom and he was kind of like losing his mind and he saw himself in that hood and everything, I was like, what's that? It didn't correlate until later on where it's like, oh, Dr. Ito's like zombie subjects. And then the fact is that Ito, like when he went to see, um, when he went to see Pat, he saw Pat, uh, Rick and Beth as, um, Dr. Ito and his people. And then I was like, well, we know Ito can affect people's memories. He got, um, what's his face? His memories back. He got, um. He got brainwave his memories back, so I was like, maybe they experimented on him. But I feel like that would have come up conversation wise. So I guess because the thing is, he talks about it later on. But Julian was like, not Julian. Justin was like, oh, I'm going. I was I was chasing a dragon, which we know Edo is a dragon. But what's also interesting too is like he talked about the fact that King Arthur gave him a sword. You know that the sword he has is Excalibur and everything. Which I also love that conversation again about like, wait, this guy was his shining armor. He was part of like the seven, and then Beth being like, but there's eight of you. Yes, I know, Beth. Um, but um, it begs the question, because Beth was like, wait, does that mean you're from the past? So that's the thing. Is he a man out of time? Or is he just because, like, his whole, like, persona he created became his idea? Either he's, like, he's so lost in a persona that he created. But even Pat was like, yeah, I think this is kind of, I mean, to be fair, we've got a cosmic staff. We have... Rick's, you know, hourglass. We've got the, like, there's other stuff. I mean, some of that science fictional stuff, but then you like, you have the cosmic stuff. I mean, we're talking about the DC universe where we talk about beings that are basically on the level of gods. You know, it's like Superman. I mean, he's an alien, so that's some more science fictional stuff. But then you take Diana, uh, Wonder Woman. Um, she's on that god level. She is a god I mean I guess it depends on the continuity at least based on the movies that she's half god you know so it's that thing of like it, this is this world this universe that they live in so it's not that big of a stretch but like that's what I was wondering I was like could we see Edo has able, been able to live for a long time and part of me wonders if just 
uh, Justin is who he claimed to be, like maybe he has a form of immortality. So maybe it could be, maybe that has some, some well, I'm sure Ito's experiments of making himself the way he is also played a role in that. But that's the thing of like, is it a cross of like, there might be some truth to that fiction. So either, like I said, is he a man out of time? Is he just ageless? Or is it just a combination of like, maybe like, yes, there's truth to it, but maybe like wielding Excalibur made him kind of absorb someone else. Like the uh, person that, actually got the sword from Arthur like you know maybe it just you know maybe all those memories are stored in the sword and he passed to him when he wielded it because it seems like it seemed like at least from the picture I mean I didn't get a close enough look at his face but he seemed like he definitely was younger so it's not like he is immortal or maybe maybe not I don't know there's still a lot to that but um when it is all said and done though um Brainwave does know who Courtney is, so like he got his memory back. So she needs the staff, but the staff's still not working. She's like, the staff knows I'm not um, Starman's daughter, but Pat's like, the staff always knew. It just believed in you. It just it just needs you to start believing in yourself again. And once again, this is where the Kingdom Hearts stuff comes to. Once again, I will never. I I always jokingly say, but I will never feel bad about referencing everything to Kingdom Hearts. Um, but the fact of the matter is, spoilers for Kingdom Hearts. Sora got the Keyblade back because he believed himself. In that one moment, his heart was stronger than Riku's, and so the Keyblade that was originally supposed to be Riku's became his. And that's what ends up happening because it, and Courtney doesn't do it by herself. She's like she needs her mom and Pat there because I think for her it's like the, she needs the people she cares about most by her side the people she believes in her that most because you know even Barbara's in this mess, like complicated position because it's like what do I do obviously like we have to stay here because like the fact is we can't just like not do anything because yes I want to protect you I, you're my daughter I love you so I don't want anything to ever happen to you I want you to get killed but if we're not here to fight like what's going to happen to the rest of the families in Blue Valley so it's that thing of like you know are you going to try and put your family first before the other people in need so that kind of look but I think in that moment you know them all together and I feel like the staff shined brighter than it has before because I think it's just because now it's not like oh I'm wielding it because I'm Starman's order it's like no I'm wielding this because I'm Star Girl. I believe in myself I believe we can do this I believe I have the power to kind of fight this and then, you know, part of me kept wondering, I was like, tell, please, I was like, please tell me Mike's going to be there. We're like, what the hell is going on? I was, I was hoping it was almost going to be a little bit of a repeat with Barbara. Uh, so I was like, oh, this is going to be his way of finding out. But it said it was actually Justin who came down and he was like, oh, the light, our queen has been found. So I guess, you know, which is so interesting in the long run, just because obviously, like, was it last week? No, it was like the week before last. Uh, Cursed on Netflix. Uh, Nimue's her whole situation being like the queen who wielded the sword before Arthur, you know, so I just think that's kind of like interesting, you know, timing and the parallels and stuff like that. But um, regardless of all of that, time is of the essence because as we can see, their plans are the clock for their plans to initiate, you know, Project New America is clicking down. They have less than 13 hours uh, until everything goes down. So it's going to be interesting to see where all this ends up taking us. We are only two episodes left this season. It's going to be interesting to see where everything ends up ultimately taking us going forward into uh, next week's episode. But really, that's all I want to talk about to the next time we meet. Be happy, be safe, love, live life to the fullest and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.